people around the world who are fighting for equality, and, and, and I really mean this, they are totally annoyed at the New York, Hollywood, West Hollywood gays yeah. who, who raise a lot of money for black tie events and aren't doing a thing to help our brothers and sisters in Lebanon mm -hmm. who are getting arrested. I went to the 1993 March on Washington for uh, when, when Bill Clinton and Al Gore had taken over. Mm -hmm. And that march was incredible because they're, I, I'm gonna get the number wrong and somebody's gonna come at me. Oh, they'll but, come at you. Yeah, I think it was like a million people, right? A mil gays and lesbians and, and straight supporters all came out to Washington and marched. And it was dramatic in that, I think it was at that point that, that things became political on, on gays and lesbians and, and the LGBT movement. Um, before then, we kind of all were on the outs, and so we were together. We in Washington, you know, people, Republicans and Democrats, were uh, not making this the wedge issue. But I will say that that, that the March on Washington um, left our community with a sense of we just want equality. And if you go back to that march, Dave, the mantra was tolerance and diversity. We recognized mm -hmm. that other people were not going to agree with us. And our whole request, our ask was just embrace diversity. We know you don't, you don't agree with everything that, that you know, we stand for, but let's just be tolerant of each other. So, Let, remember, hate is not a family value, was this whole thing. Yeah. Now, the, the entire leadership of the LGBT movement in Washington, D.C., is all about cancel culture mm -hmm. and absolutely pushing people out of the argument to say, I'm, I don't even wanna be friends with you if you voted for Trump or you're a gay conservative. I can't even fathom but, being friends with you. Well, now they also wanna take your gayness away, right? So they'll write articles, that famous article in Out Magazine about how Peter Thiel is not gay. Enough, because yeah. it's Because it's not who you have sex with or who you love that makes you gay, it's actually a political yeah. way of thinking that makes you gay, which is Which, which is, is why Glad um, yeah. has this whole like immigration and, and it's a movement beyond anything that has to do with gays and lesbians. And I think it's an exit, they're trying to survive, right? Well, is that just the cops need a certain amount of crime type of thing? Yeah. It's like, we got equal rights, and Correct. not to say everything is perfect, and there right. are some But I work, ar I work around the world, let me tell you. It's pretty. <laughs> people around the world who are fighting for equality, and, and, and I really mean this, they are totally annoyed at the New York, Hollywood, West Hollywood gays, yeah. who, who raise a lot of money for black tie, events and aren't doing a thing to help our brothers and sisters in Lebanon mm -hmm. who are getting arrested or look what happened in Zambia. They literally prosecuted two, two guys for being gay and, and the court said, oh no, we're doing this because they're gay. They didn't make up some pedophilia thing. No, no, but if you say something about that, you're somehow racist, right? Or you're a xenophobe right. or like, something like that because you're pushing your values, but some values are better than others. That must be the number one thing you have to fight all the time, right? at the UN, or over the years at the UN that you had to fight that yeah. now as an ambassador? Well, I'm now fighting this thing at the State Department where when it comes to the decriminalization campaign. Um, so you're, you're spearheading this thing, right? I'm spearheading this yeah. thing. Uh, there are 69 countries that criminalize homosexuality. 10 will kill you for being gay. And we've launched a process, uh, we've done a whole bunch. We're trying to stay out of the media in terms of telling them every little thing. Uh, because the media is pretty hostile to something like this, uh, we've we've we're making great the progress. The media is pretty hostile to something like decriminalizing from the Trump certain. administration. Right, no, uh, honestly, yeah. I know. Well, we'll get to that. I was about to tell you a second ago that we've talked for about a half hour or so, and, and until about a minute ago, the T word had not come up yet, which I think is a record. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, so we'll get to that in a second. But sorry, go ahead. But but the decriminalization campaign, um, it, we, we're making so much progress. Uh, granted, this is gonna be a long fight, uh, trying to convince 69 countries to do uh, a, a change in domestic laws to, to not criminalize homosexuality. And that's all this is, is step one, is just to work on criminalization. Others are working on step two through 20. Mm -hmm. I, I felt the need to do step one, because when I look around the world, step one wasn't really being pushed. 
Um, I've been working with, you know, this is gonna be bad because they're probably gonna go after them, but um, I've been working with Stuart Milk of the Harvey Milk Foundation, who's fantastic, who's totally focused on this problem. And so what we're trying to do is to have 69 different uh, campaigns, basically, because you've got to work with the local um, community. Remarkable stories that I could just go in over and over that I don't, because I don't want to highlight it and, and scare people away right. that are working in these countries. But suffice to say, um, this was a fight that needed to happen that was not happening. And right now, I have to face at the State Department resistance from people who don't want Americans or Westerners to go into other countries and take a stand for the decriminalization campaign. Because literally there are countries that believe that the West and specifically America have imported into their country being gay. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh no, no American should talk about this because you're gonna emphasize. My position back is that's the stupidest idea that Americans brought in the gay. Right. There were I'm no not, gay people before America. It's only about a 200 year thing. Right, you know? so I'm not gonna actually be silent on that and participate in letting them silence me because they've got some crazy conspiracy theory. I'm gonna bust the, the conspiracy theory wide open and say, you're wrong. How, how do you decide though when to use extra pressure to get a country to do something? Because I know as, as generally as a conservative and from what I know about you, you don't love the idea of, go, of telling countries what to do. Like yeah. it's not really like in the conservative ethos. Right. And yet I understand you want people to be free. So how do you decide when we can apply more Such pressure? Such a or, good question. Yeah. Uh, I you get know, one, I get one every interview, <laughs> that, that's the one. I would say that I have this philosophy that, that as a diplomat, I am working at the State Department and I have to be successful in order to avoid war because if you have diplomats who are not successful, that file of a problem gets transferred over to the Pentagon and they don't negotiate, they just solve the problem. And so I firmly believe that diplomats should be at the forefront of pushing and prodding and demanding talks and demanding that we have a table to, to you know, air our grievances on. Even before, like if we're planning to bomb, if, if, the, if DOD is ready to, to attack, I would hope that we have brave diplomats that are saying, wait a minute, I got one more chance. Let's sit down, let's try the diplomacy thing. So, you know, I get hit constantly for, oh, you're undiplomatic or you're too tough. And I thought, that's what you want in a diplomat. Cause you wanna have somebody that's working hard to avoid war mm -hmm. through talk. Through, through pushing and prodding rather than transferring the file over and, and you know, having a problem solved through military action. Has some of that been tough for you though? Because you used to fight on Twitter more, be more of like a, a battler there where you know, you've, you're an ambassador now, you're a guy in a hoodie. You've calmed it down a little bit. I still think that I pick my fights. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel like I've backed off. What I do think is, um, that that I want to make sure that someone is in that fight, and so I look to see, you know, like on a on a media bias issue, I still get really uh, charged up mm -hmm. if the group think in Washington or the political circles is one way, and nobody's challenging that. I'm willing to jump in. I don't care if I have the title of ambassador. I'm still going to jump in and try to to push and correct the record where I see fit. If others are doing it, and thank God you're in there to do it. <laughs> Uh, then sometimes I can little ground of, support. You know? Yeah, I can let it go and look for the next problem. Yeah, um, can you talk a little bit about just generally what the state of the UN is and what it was like to be there? And you know that so many people think that it's like this sort of perfect thing that the Ooh. countries come together and figure out what's right for everybody. Like they love the idea of it more than yeah. I think functionally how it works. Right or does not work. Well, first of all, the. Uh, I always try to correct people that, that the UN doesn't really exist. The UN is member states, right? So when somebody says, oh, the UN says no, I always say, the UN doesn't say no. Members at the UN, maybe Russia and China got together in the Security mm -hmm. Council and said no, but the UN doesn't take a position. And so I, I try to not just reflexively blame, oh, the UN, the UN. stopped something because it's really member countries. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. The second thing is, is the UN does not work unless the US is leading it. 
whether it's the World Food Program, UNICEF, UNDP, you know, the development programs, whatever it is, the U.S. has to be there, otherwise the U.N. does not work. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.